then we'll Tim, are you hitting the yes? I oh, well, or do I need to do record? I guess you do because it says that I need the host Where's position the, permission. The record? It's right at the bottom next to share screen. Oh, there it is on mine. What's that? Record to the Look at my man with that top button and button ready to go. Casual. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Unwind. Loosen up a little. <laughs> I guess you do because it says that I need the host position. Oh, Miss McCain, uh, closed out of any browser that's open. What is it, Tim? Look at my man with that top button and button ready to go. Any web browser you have open? Good. Unwind, loosen up a little. <laughs> Why is that repeating? <laughs> hey, I'm just telling you to be quiet. Close out many browsers. Okay, I'm I'm trying. What is it? Is Sean on here? I'm here. Can anybody hear me? And see me? We can hear you, but we can't see you. I can't connect on my laptop. I've got my phone out right now. So all right. Whenever you're okay, ready. Tim. Am I straightened up now? <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I've got all those web browsers closed. No echo. Do we not hear any echo now? No, we're good. Thank God. <laughs> Are we ready to go? We're ready. All right. We'll call to order the Augusta Independent February 11th, 2021, 6 p.m. special board meeting. Uh, we will do roll call. Uh, Chastity? Here. Laura? Here. Jan? Here. Don? Here. And myself. Um, Mr. Kelf, could you do the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, ma'am. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, the United States, States of America, America. And, to and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And would you mind doing the mission statement for us? <clears throat> The mission of Augusta Independent School is to ensure all students achieve high levels of learning in a nurturing climate, empowering them to be responsible and productive citizens of a global community. Thank you, Mr. I need a motion to approve our agenda. Motion made. Laura made the motion. I need a second. Cassidy. Cassidy seconds. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, all right, principal's report, student achievement. Uh, we don't have any student achievement. We'll hopefully, when we get back in person and some time and get our, we're finishing up our second round of iReady, so we'll have some of those hopefully, you know, in March as we move forward. Everything's just kind of been, you, you know as well as I do how it's been, uh, especially you parents and the ones that have had to uh, deal with everything. Appreciate the flexibility. Uh so I just want to talk about the state accountability. That's kind of what's on everybody's mind in our uh, in our business. Are we going to have to? What is it going to look like? Uh, I was on a DAC webcast today, and they have applied for waivers for both assessment and accountability. They're pretty certain that our waiver for accountability will be granted, which means we still might do some type of assessment, but it won't be schools won't be accountable. They're just waiting for the national waiver, and I guess with the new. Uh, new government, new uh, chair educationer, commissioner of education or federal education changes. Those, those are kind of on hold right now, but they were pretty confident uh, at the state level in KDE that we wouldn't be accountable. But even with that being said, there have been some changes. Senate Bill 158 has uh, changed some things that we're looking for, uh, mainly the indicators uh, status and change for state indicators and how they're gonna be measured. Uh, so basically for each indicator, and those are student assessment results, progress towards achieving English proficiency by English learners, quality of school climate and safety, high school graduations rates and post-secondary readiness. There's gonna be a five by five level ranging from very high to very low. 
and then five change levels ranging from increase significantly to decrease significantly. Basically, they're going to give everything a color ranking from low to high, red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. And for some reason, they think that'll be more easy to understand than the last two or three methods we use, but it's still going to boil down to, uh, you know, giving the school the ranking on those two things. Uh, everything was approved, but then I guess they got some recommendation from uh, the School Curriculum Assessment and Accountability Council, asked the KBE to consider raising the weight of state assessment results in science, social studies, and writing to 30% and dropping the weight of post-secondary readiness to 10%. So if they do that, because uh, right now they said at 20%, they think science, social studies, and writing will not be as or will not be taught as readily or people focus not focus on it as much. So right now it's English and math are 45%. They're hoping for science, social studies, and writing to be 30%. 5% will be your English learner progress. 4% will be the quality of school climate and safety. They would lower post-secondary readiness from 20% to 10% and 6% for graduation rate. So uh, everything's been approved. Basically, other than that, they're in the 60-day public comment period, which to me places us almost in May, which makes it almost me to believe it's going to be hard to, you know, to hold anything accountable if they don't even have a stable system in place. But that's what they're looking at. Uh, so, uh, like I said, I'll keep you updated. They're supposed to, uh, like I said, they filed for waivers. They're supposed to hear from those soon. Uh, we will, as far as accountability, we will be taking the uh, ACT March 9th for the juniors. That'll be the statewide test. Uh, they really didn't have a good answer. A lot of people were questioning what to do with virtual kids, and their answer was to just pretty much make them come in, which, as we know, parents that aren't comfortable aren't going to send them in. So most people didn't like that answer. So basically they said do the best you can and get them in there, but uh, – they're obviously not going to be any non-participation penalties if parents don't send those in or if kids are full-time virtual. So that's kind of where we stand with accountability. Uh, it's kind of like everything else right now. You, you really don't know. Just uh, important to be very flexible as, as teachers, as school. The students have done awesome. I was on several Zooms today watching them and the teachers. I mean, it, it's just amazing the work, the students, how – how flexible and how excited they still are to learn and the teachers and then what the parents are doing with these kids at home. So I commend all three of those, uh, you know, hats off to all of them in this trying times. So any questions from anyone about that? Robin, do, do we have many juniors that um, would, that are virtual that maybe wouldn't come in for that test? Uh, I'll be honest with you, Julie, and that's probably what the state wants to hear. The ones that we need to come in will come in. The ones that uh, probably wouldn't help the score much, that wouldn't come in, we'll reach out to them, you know, and try. But I, I, I think most will come in. Okay. You might have one or two. I know the, the ones Mr. Bryan and I talked about that were virtual, would we felt certain would come in. Mr. Kelts and Mr. Bryan do this. Do as well as anybody I know getting the majority of our kids to come in. Uh, I mean, they have a as good a relationship as you would have with any of these kids. So I'm sure that we'll get the majority in anyway. Absolutely. And if it's transportation, you know, we'll go get them whatever we need to do on that day, whatever's best for them. All right. And by that time, most of the building will have had both vaccines and a lot of the levels, are, you know, they'll be through a couple more levels. So I think things will loosen up a little. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Uh, superintendent's report. Yes. Well, I first just want to thank my administrative staff, uh, Mr. Literal and Mr. Kelch and Tina and Barry and everyone they've they've really been working behind the scenes this week and keeping everything going and I appreciate them and uh, I know we're in good hands and it's it's good to under the circumstances have to be home and 
know everything is is still running very smoothly and uh, appreciate all their leadership and hard work of course this whole thing's been hard work under you know the pandemic but uh but we are very very blessed with our leadership at augusta independent and before i forget i wanted to mention that the ksba conference that was scheduled for april has been moved to may 14th through the 16th. Um, so again, we're watching. I know board members are planning on attending this year to get your hours and Tina has been watching it closely. So when it does open up for registration, um, we'll let you all know. Um, as far as the uh, second vaccination for staff, that is uh, tentatively scheduled uh, for Friday, February 26th. We were, uh, we had talked about some options and decided given that it's likely that individuals get sick from the second dose, we thought it would be a good idea to conduct this second vaccination on a Friday to give everyone the weekend in case they did become symptomatic. Um, so that is the plan there. Also did uh, just want to mention that um, KDE has sent out school districts um, new COVID-19 guidance for schools operating after the vaccinations. And of course, um, you know, we still have to continue all of our safety precautions um, and, and all of those things to reduce the spread. Um, of course, districts you know, offered it to all employees, but not all, but not everyone, you know, opted to take the vaccine. Um, one of the things is that districts still have to provide a uh, virtual work option for employees that meet high risk complications uh, due to COVID, but that would end after seven days after they've had the second vaccine. Of course, that really didn't apply, you know, to us, we didn't have any circumstances like that. Um, but I did just want to mention that and also the fact that it wouldn't apply for anyone who didn't take the vaccine. So that wouldn't be an option for an employee who didn't take the vaccine. Um, <clears throat> just wanted to give you a quick legislative update. Um, one of the, the major bills right now is House Bill 192. Um, which is the, the state budget. Um, again, the, the big push is, is obviously um, for as much funding as possible, especially with you know, the circumstances with the pandemic and uh, so much expense and, and burdens that schools have, have been under. Um, House Bill 149 is the opposition of um, of a uh, tax credits or the privatization of public school funds. Uh, so there obviously is a big push, you know, against any kind of school voucher or anything like that. Um, and then we have a House Bill 258, which is actually a new tier of benefits for, um, for teacher retirement system hires that would start on January 1st of 2022, which would be basically a uh, high plan of a supplemental uh, plan similar to a defined benefit like we have now with uh, a 401k-like uh, system. Of course, that wouldn't change anything for existing or active or retired. Um, TRS member. So that, that is a good thing. That is uh, something that was, you know, the big problem a couple of years ago is they were trying to change it for current members and retirees. And so that's much better. Um, also wanted to mention that the latest, of course, you all learned last month that we received our uh, coronavirus relief funds, um, which was 388,000. Um, I know Tim listened to the, a webcast this week. 
um, to talk about, you know, some guidance on how that funding can be used. Of course, that can go back to when the pandemic started um, on March 13th of 2020, and then we can obligate funds all the way to September um, 30th of 2023. So um, Tim's already been working on, on some things to um, obligate for those funds. Um, also wanted to mention open enrollment bill. This is uh, House Bill 170, um, something we've talked about for quite for several years. Um, basically, an open enrollment where uh, students could attend, you know, the, the district of their their choice um, because of the fact that people are really against the tax credits. <clears throat> this is really getting some traction. Um, it's my understanding that uh, there's a lot of support this session for House Bill 170. Um, so that would be a, a game changer, as we know, for Augusta Independent. So as I get more information on this, this was just filed last week. So I get more information on this. I'll let everyone know because that's something we want to reach out to our legislators and uh, let them know that we support and are in favor of. Uh, we did submit the TENCO Youth Employment Grant again this year. Um, that was in the amount of a little over $89,000. Um, so we should hear about that within the next month or two. And then one other thing I wanted to mention was the school calendar. There will be an amendment to the school calendar um, because they changed the state tournament <clears throat> this year, excuse me. Uh, we were supposed to <coughs> be off on March 5th. That was state tournament day. So we're gonna be in session now, March 5th. And then we will take off on April 2nd, which we're out probably better anyway because it was Good Friday, and then it it is uh, then the following week is when our spring break is. So we will have school March fifth. We will be off Friday, um, April second for Good Friday, <clears throat> and that's all I have. Unless you all have any questions, Miss McCain, can I jump in real quick? Yes, I wanted. To, I talked with Miss McCain today, Julie, and I wanted to. Uh, just mentioned trying to get the boards filled, make sure it's all right. You know, with COVID and now with ICE this week and possibly next week, uh, the boys and girls have the possibility of missing quite a few basketball games. And I know people have started reaching out to them about possibly if it comes to that playing a couple Sunday afternoon games, uh, which we've never done a lot on Sunday and I'm not a big fan of, but considering the situation and, you know, uh, missing – quite a few games because of teams being quarantined or, or two or three games this week, possibly another one tomorrow night, depending. I just wanted to uh, get the boards fill on that because that, that is something several teams have reached out to us about doing if we possibly get to the point where we feel we need to make up some of those games that we've missed for COVID or the bad weather. Just wanted to make sure, sure that would be all right with the board. I think that would be fine, yeah. Yeah. What happens with the, like the custodial leave thing right that on a Sunday? Uh, most of that would, I mean, would they would either, most of the time they usually just come in and do it. Rick's there. The gym would be cleaned up. Uh, or we'd give them a couple hours, come in a little later through the week. I mean, it, with only 100 people there anymore, there's not a lot of cleanup much anymore. I don't think it would be a big deal. Yeah, we would just adjust their hours. If, if, if they didn't want to come in and do it, they could just wait until Monday morning, you know, to do it when they come in. Or they could opt to come in and do it if they were already going to be there. And then he can just let them, you know, leave early. Anybody Monday. have any questions or comments about that? Dion no. or Jesse? No. Sean? No, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. If I can't be in school, at least they have sports. So, okay. Do we have to put that to a vote, or is that no? I I really just wanted him to in, inform the board um, because it isn't something that we typically would ever approve or have you know the school do on a Sunday. But 
Okay. You know, given the circumstances, we're kind right. of running out of time and options. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, we can we can definitely do that, Mr. Couch. Thank you all. Appreciate it. All right. Anything else for Ms. McCain? All right. We'll go down to attendance. Um, looks like our enrollment is uh, P through 12, 320, K through 12, 303. We have 71 virtual students. Uh, January attendance participation, 94%. Year to date, 92.54. Um, our school overall self-reporting COVID data, quarantine students due to direct exposure, 66. Quarantine students tested positive, 11. Quarantine staff due to direct exposure, 10. Quarantine staff tested positive, three. And then currently there are three quarantine students and one staff due to direct exposure one positive staff member and zero students. Is this all still pretty current? Yes. Okay. All right, any questions about the attendance? Looks like the attendance has gone up though, right? I know. It's gone up since December. Yes, it definitely wow. improved. Good. Great. All right. I'm thinking, yeah, that's what I see. <laughs> yes, and, and Mr. Bryant, he works very hard on that attendance. Um, any uh, chat? as well. He what? You kind of cut out. What'd you say, Ms. McCain? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was just bragging on Mr. Bryant. He's done oh, okay. a really good job with the attendance, um, staying in contact with, you know, those students and their parents and working with the teachers to get in touch with them. So they've done a really good job with that. Are we doing pretty good with the uh, virtual students and making sure that we're in touch with all of them? Uh, yes, Mr. Kelch, do you want to? Yeah, we've uh, actually, with some of these snow days, we've kind of used our, our aides, our teacher aides to kind of help the teachers. Teachers kind of assign those to reach out to. We're doing home visits and constantly contacting mainly on Wednesdays, but also through the week. Uh, there's, you know, like I mentioned, I think one of the last months, given a couple of them fell in grades, several of them, uh, they're at the end of the semester has awakened, if not the kids, their parents at least. And uh, so there's been a lot more contact early on here in the third nine weeks when they saw that uh, if they didn't do anything at all, they were gonna fail those semesters. So. Uh, Yes, the contact has been much better. The, the, the effort from the kids and the people uh, virtual have been a lot better. And uh, we're very pleased with the progress we've made there. But the teachers, once again, teachers, Mr. Bryant, uh, have done a great job staying, staying on top of that. Okay, well, appreciate that. Thank you. Board members, Chastity, you have any? Nope. Uh, Laura? No. Uh, Dion? No. Don? I just have a question. How many uh, uh, did any of the teachers uh, opt out of the vaccine the first round? Mr. Kelch, how, how, what percentage? I would say maybe less than less than ten. I'm sure. I can percent maybe. I know. Uh, as far as actual teachers, was it two or three? Miss McCain, I don't recall. I know. I know not everyone got it, but a large majority did. Right. I, I think if you took into all of our, I'd have to go and look, Sean, but... That, I don't um, need a concrete number, I'm just curious. Well, I'm saying I think about probably 90, probably 90% 90 of our staff yeah. took it. So I, we had a very high number in comparison to some districts that I heard. Yeah, that's why I was curious. Yeah, I heard some districts only had about 30, 40%. Wow. So I think we were very high. That's great. In some places, I don't know, not necessarily school districts, but we're forcing employees to take it. So, hmm. uh, Anything else? All right. Uh, next on the agenda is our uh, monthly budget report. <clears throat> All right. Um, looking at revenue receipts through January. They totaled over $1,128,000. Uh, local revenue for the general fund, um, a lot of these numbers are the same as last month. The ones that have changed, $240,000 in property taxes has been collected, $62,000 in utility tax, 
uh, almost 14,000 in motor vehicle tax and about 11,000 in tuition. I think all the other numbers on there are the same as last month from that category. State revenue, $780,000 in SEEK funding has been received and approximately 3,800 in uh, taxes from the state. And then federal general fund revenue, nearly $6,000 uh, received for Medicaid reimbursement. Our expenditures through January totaled $925,000. Uh, the school budget has expended $8,600 year to date, which includes 4,000 on copying costs, 1,600 on both technology resources and general supplies, and $1,100 on dues and fees. Our maintenance budget has expended $167,000 through January. That includes 46,000 on property insurance, 44,000 on utility services, 43,000 for salaries and benefits, uh, 12,000 on general supplies, $11,000 on repairs and maintenance, $4,000 in technology and camera equipment, $4,000 for professional services and $2,000 on uh, general equipment. 56% uh, of the maintenance budget has been utilized. Transportation budget through January, those costs have totaled $43,000 with salaries and benefits accounting for 16,000, um, 11,000 for the suburban payment and 8,000 for fleet insurance, uh, 4,000 for vehicle repair and maintenance, $2,800 on diesel fuel and gasoline combined, uh, $1,000 on professional services and drug testing and $700 on repair parts. And we've utilized 42% of our transportation budget year to date. And our receipts currently exceed our expenditures for the general fund by a little over 203,000. Um, nothing to report for the special revenue fund. And then looking at food service, nearly 82,000 has been received in federal reimbursement, uh, 1,200 for local revenue and $600 for state revenue. Our receipts have totaled $84,000 uh, through January. Our expenditures have totaled 93,000, which in includes uh, 53,500 on salaries and benefits, 31,000 on food supplies, $5,700 on general supplies, $1,000 on machinery and $800 on dues and fees. Our food service balance um, stands at approximately $37,000, which has been very close to that for the last three or four months. And um, I don't know if it'll happen before next month, but obviously as we start uh, using this uh, new, we'll call it just new the CARES Act money, that gives us an opportunity to reimburse some costs. So it could actually be that some of these expenses at some point go down a little bit from one month to the next as we're able to apply that reimbursement. So just something to keep in mind going forward. We're probably able to reimburse some of those maintenance, transportation and food service costs uh, that have come out of the general fund um, and re reimburse some of that back with our new CARES Act money. Any questions? All right. I need a motion to approve the monthly budget report. Make a motion, Dion. Made, Dion. Dion made a motion. I need a second. Sean second. Yes, yes Sean second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Aye. Monthly facility report. As you can see, we installed camera and gym for concession stand, repaired fogger, built frame for athletic department, Rehung and organized composites, replaced cafeteria HVAC, repaired toilet and referee's locker room, mounted whiteboard and locker room, repaired toilet and downstairs girls' bathroom. And then the, the local planning committee held their third meeting and public forum on February 4th, 2021, as part of the process to update the district facility plan. And then we did have an attached uh, draft DFP present it. Um, any other comments to make about that? Um, I did want to mention that we have two more meetings um, with the LPC. Our next meeting will be March 11th. And then I believe then our, our last meeting actually corresponds with our uh, April 1st board meeting. So at that board meeting, um, we will then, the board will approve the final district facilities plan um, that the LPC then presents. Um, really, our LPC is not really changed since the last one because we really didn't do any major capital projects. What has changed are the cost values, which is important that 
we get those cost values up because it just means that, you know, the, the, the pots of money that the legislation, legislators um, apply for districts will just get a, a more bigger piece of the pie, basically. So um, that's what we're looking at. It looks like our uh, unmet need, which is a good thing. It looks like uh, it went up about $3 million from the last um, district facilities plan. So that actually is favorable um, for us. And that's really the big reason we've had to go through this whole process again, so we can get those that unmet need value up as high as, as we can. Any questions? All right, I need a motion to approve the monthly facility report. Motion made. Laura made Laura. a motion. I need a second, Chastity, second. All in favor, say aye. 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 The 2021-2022 school calendar. Uh, looks like it's similar calendar to the 2020-2021 school year. Due to unpreventable circumstances caused by the pandemic, the calendar committee recommended following the same calendar for the upcoming school year. Any questions or comments? That was good. I need a motion to approve the 2021 2022 school calendar. Make a motion, Dion. Dion made a motion. Chastity second. All in favor say aye. 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 Business and items. Approve previous meetings, approve bills, approve treasurer report. I need a motion to approve the business and consent items as presented. Sean made the motion. I need a second. I'll second. Our second on say aye. 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 And um, I need a motion to adjourn. Aye. Motion aye. Chastity, aye. I'll second. second. Um, Cassie made it. Laura seconded. On say aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned. And uh, go lay down. Thank you so much <laughs> for being able to to uh, have this meeting. I know you don't feel well, so uh, you need to go lay down and try to recover. Yes. Thank you all. It's uh, like I said. It's it's good at least just knowing that we've been in good hands definitely has made it made a, a, a little giving me a little more peace of mind this week anyway so all right guys thank you all have a great week all Thanks, take Robert. care of yourself now i will i'll talk you to you anything, you anything let us know. all right thank take you take care